Hey folks, welcome to board the warships with the magnificent Margon. It has been who knows how long. Um, I thought the first year of having a son was interesting, but the well now that we've had one year down since he's been born, I put it this way, he's just ramped it up another gear, which makes it even harder for me to actually produce YouTube videos at this point in time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and do as many videos as I can when I can. The biggest problem I have is I'm not playing a lot of World of Warships. I'm actually now playing um, a lot of World of Warships in team battles, which is actually surprisingly quite interesting in the fact that you've got to have a great combination of ships, a great combination of players, and a great combination in general of how, how to play. And here he comes back again. I wonder if I'm ever going to actually get this review done on the New Mexico. Hello! You chasing the dogs? Okay, you get him. I'll, I'll sit here. Yeah? I'll sit here? You chase the dog. It saves me having to put up with him for a little bit. Um, so yeah, um, so I'm playing teams, I'm playing Dota, so I'm actually playing in my Manhan quite a fair bit and surprisingly I, I don't know whether this is the right destroyer or not um, for team battles like we've got a Hatsaharu and we have me and my American destroyer I still haven't figured out whether it's a good or great combination as of yet for team battles itself so naturally what else do I have to choose? I haven't got much of it in the way of tier 7s. So I've got the Pensacola, but the Pensacola is not a recommendation. Now, why am I saying tier 7s? Well, on the Southeast Asian server, they decide we have to start at tier 7, not tier 8. Like, what? Why does everyone else get to play at tier 8? Hey, yeah, you. Why is everyone... Don't you take things off my desk. Um, ah, I'm watching you. Um, so... It's interesting in that concept that we start at seven, yet everyone else is at eight. I don't, I don't get it. It just doesn't make sense. I would love to be able to use the um, fucking stop this wind blowing. It might be an idea. Um, the Turpets. The Turpets is a magical battleship. It's probably the best one for the tier, um, for the tier eight at this point in time. Very chosen by the EU and a and I'm sure the RU servers. Um, the other one, which is, I can't for the life of me quickly put my finger on it. I'm pretty sure it's the Russian one. Yeah, it is the Russian one. It is the Mikhail Kutuzo. Um, great uh, battle, uh, ugh, battleship cruiser tier 8. Um, I think this is actually another one of those really, really great sh cruisers. It's very heavily armoured and it does suit quite well, along with the fact that it gets a lovely, lovely smoke screen. I haven't actually fitted it out with stuff. Holy heck. Did I put stuff on my turbots? I haven't even got anything on my turbots. I've been playing these ships without anything on them. Typical me. That's the way it goes when I don't look at things. But I've got torpedoes. This thing gets a smoke screen consumable, which can be quite interesting and come in quite quite handy at times too so it covers a role of a multitude of different things I don't know though what they're using at tier 8 for the destroyers as such um, it's I, I would know they, they may be using Japanese destroyers let's have a look at the tier 8 Japanese is the Fubaki good possibility of it I I don't know whether the um, American Benson would be very good there myself. I haven't actually been up to tier 8 yet. I, I need to get my bundle gear. Well, I haven't. I've got New Orleans. Uh, Russian wise, well, yeah, possibly the um, Chineskit. Possibly. And German. I don't know what we've got in German. We've got cruisers in German, so who knows for the Germans when they get there. So the tier 8s could be very interesting. And, team battles if we ever get tier 8 on the Asian server. 
Anyway, let's go back to the New Mexico. Now, New Mexico is... I played this in the closed beta. Now, in the closed beta, I used this ship very much as a battering ram against the enemy, basically. It, the American battleships, I find, are so heavily armoured that they're there to soak up damage. They're there to just be the brute force. They've got very big, powerful guns um, in them, and, like... 356 millimeter guns like that's not too bad um, and then you've got um, like the, the secondary armor is the same as what I got on my man hand basically when you look at the guns 127 127 so that these guns which are not too bad at the um, tier, tier 8 sort of thing at great firing rate go as the basic armaments um, AA defensively wise, um, not not so positive about it. It's got great AA defense when you start actually out kidding at the different holes and stuff. But to start off with, it's not too crash shot. But but we'll get there. Okay. Basically, what I did when I got the New Mexico, I pretty well free XP'd all the way up to the whole C. It's one of those ships where. The whole A, yeah, it's good, but you just don't get the same armor value as you do with the whole C or even the whole B. So if you do have the opportunity of using some of your free XP, this is one of those ships that you would use it on, similar to as in the Pensacola when I did my Pensacola review. Things are still the same there with the Pensacola. Um, so I find that sometimes ships don't come into their elements at their max. Some ships you can actually grind through because they're quite, quite good from the word go. Similarly, the Cleveland, the Cleveland Tier 6 is a cruiser. You can play it with all the basics on it very successfully and farm up because you get pretty well the same value out of it. Um, Armament wise compared to other ships. Well, let's have a look. Let's have a look at I think it's the Fuso on the Japanese tier 6 line. Come on, keep up with me. Where are we? Fuso tier 6. Now the Fuso, the great thing about the Fuso, and this is the thing a lot of people forget. Come on, show me the ship. Um, it's a 356 caliber gun as well, but the range being at that's not right. Click on this. The range of the main battery, getting it upgraded, stepping it up to 21 kilometers is absolutely amazing. Okay, when you are in your ultimate, your, your peak prime position of firing, the American battleships generally are only just starting to get into their starting range. Like, you look at that, that's, that's ridiculous. Like, honestly, 21 kilometers like if we have a look at this it's 14 kilometers and that's pretty well unmodified as such like I've got the gun control modification too and it only gives me that extra little bit of range um, upgrade wise I've pretty well got the only upgrades I feel that you should have on these now you probably if you do feel inclined um, can have the plotting room which does increase your range by 16% I, yeah, I, I, yeah, having the extra range, yep, yeah, sweet. Um, it will mean that you, when you're firing at probably 14 kilometers, you're going to be hitting with most of your guns. But realistically, these battleships, in my opinion, are for brawling within the 10 kilometers range, which means you're going to be having a lot of people shooting at you, which comes down to the fact that now you need to angle your ships similar to what you do in World of Tanks you angle to come around corners in this you angle to sail so you absorb things and you will find that people will do nothing but spam HE at you and you cannot bounce HE most of the time so that puts in another problem that you have to counteract now for me um, captain wise well captain wise I actually think what I've done is probably the best thing. I've got the survivability basic, survivability number one, and I've got the high alert, which is good for survivability. I've also got the expert marksman, which increases the traverse spine, uh, traverse spine, um, traverse speed of caliber guns up to 
So it's probably not helping my main guns. I don't know why I put that on there. I, I, oh, I have no idea. I think the only reason why... Why have I not chosen Last Stand? Something's happened. They've actually moved things around since I actually set this up. But either way. <laughs> Last Stand, yeah, you're not going to have your rudder taken out as such or your engine taken out unless you're hit by torpedoes, which is going to happen, but most of the time you absorb them in your main hull area. Um, I couldn't actually pick something in the Tier 2 line. Since they've updated the patch, I find this line is actually redundant in a certain circumstances. All of my ships actually have last stand on them, which is something I don't need, but I feel that I have to put it on. It's, it's like, this has become useless to most things. Um, so this line, it, it needs a lot more work. They need to, to probably put this up here, I would say. Um, but who knows? Who knows what they do? And then you've got down here survivability expert, which gives you an extra 400 hit points for each ship tier. So for this, it's uh, a tier six. So I imagine that six times that, 2,400 hit points extra. That is actually something that could save your life. That is actually quite an interesting one. Um, fire preventative. Now I probably should actually put that on. That's probably my recommendation. You're going to be hit by, hit by a lot of HE shells. And minus 7% of so the risk of fire is probably a very good thing. I think I will actually, when I get some more doubloons, which I have to purchase some more when a, a good deal comes up, I will be changing from expert marksmanship through to the fire preventative maintenance. You're back again. That's nice. You're dancing to the music. Excellent. Um... Fifth line skills, well, I have no idea what to do for that one. Probably um, preventative maintenance might be the best thing for risk of modulus, but I don't think I realistically need it. Jack of all trades, actually, that might be the way to go. 15% to reload time of mounted consumables. Yeah, that, that would come in handy, particularly for your repair. Oh, you want to come up? All right, you come up and you help Daddy going through all this stuff. Oh, you're getting heavy. Alright, so here we go. Oh, we've got the last chance, which is, um, could potentially come in handy, particularly when you're down below that 10% hit points, which does happen, and you might have, like, a few seconds, uh, like, 10 seconds left, and all of a sudden you get, like, um, five seconds to reload a gun because it's, it's one of those things that could be life, and you could actually kill someone else. So, that could be interesting in itself. So, Demolition Expert is another one of those ones that, yeah, you could quite possibly have as well. So that's that's the Captain. That's going over the modules. That's going over the basic guns. Concealment-wise, well, you're in a battleship. Get used to being spotted. 14 kilometers, yeah, you, you got no hope. Um, Maneuverability-wise, it's actually got a very nice turning circle, and this ship is very nice. Do not touch my keyboard. I'm recording. Um, survivability, well, yeah, hit points, 56,000 hit points, that's not too shabby. Armor-wise, 16 mils going up to 343. Look, guys, outside of that, take, pick for what you want to do. Like, if you like sitting back and battering people at long range like you do with the Japanese battleships, once you get the Congo class, which I have actually got, I'm, I'm up, I've, I've just finished playing my Miyogi, and I have actually got all the XP unlocked to go up to the Congo. And the Congo is actually a really, really fun, long-distance battering ram ship where you can just sit back and you can lob shells in. Now, if you get the upgraded hull consumable here, look at that, 21 kilometers. You just sit back. And you just sit back at like 18 kilometers and you can shoot anyone without any fear that you're going to be hit. And it's that, that's the beauty of the Japanese ships. If you want to sit back and be a long range fire um, ship, that's exactly what you should be playing. If you want to be in the heart of it and getting in close to people inside cruiser ranges and stuff like that where you know you can soak the damage up, the American battleships are for you. And that's just, this, that, that's the only two differences between the two types of battleships that we have in World of Warships at this time. Hopefully very soon in the upcoming patches and stuff they start giving us a few more battleships. Maybe the German ones. The German ones could be very interesting as well. Um, or you've even got um, 
uh, the uh, Russian ones that could potentially come as well, as well as the, well, English, the English ones as well when they get to around to it too. The Warspite is not a bad, bad ship at tier 6, but it's not a good ship at the same time. I've used my Warspite a fair bit and I do enjoy playing the Warspite, but a lot of people actually do not like playing the Warspite. Interesting. I have a last stand on this captain. I actually wonder whether they've actually changed the second line and added in preventative mate, uh, fire at some point. I think they might have actually. That's probably something that I will be changing my battleship captains to actually have because they do burn a lot. Similarly, as you can see, main fire and battery range is 16 kilometers, same as the American battleships as well. So either you're a brawler or you're a person who likes to sit back in team battles you always need to keep in mind that you need to have the two different types of classes in my opinion um, purely and simply because having the two different classes will actually um, help help you out more or less the birds just distracted me then I realized that they were tweeting in the background they always seem to do that when I'm recording. I don't hear them any other point of the day, and then as soon as I start doing recording, they're having to join in with the conversation. So yeah, um, New Mexico, that's that's pretty well the, the guts of it. That's 15 minutes of me waffling on about it, basically, and a few minutes waffling on about other things. Um, it is a very good ship. Um, particularly when you have the battle I'm about to show you guys. Now, this is one of those battles that I don't see often but when you see it you sit there and go how why what all at the same time thinking this is going to be disastrous um and i felt that way exactly when i loaded up into the battle i went i am so screwed i am not going to enjoy this but enough talking about it let's go over and let's have a look at this battle Alrighty then guys, here we go, here is the battle. Now, if you look at this map as such, you sit here and go, you couldn't have a worse matchmaking. I am matched up against eights, tier eights, battleships, cruisers, destroyers, whatever. And you just sit there and go, what? Okay, interesting. And you marvel at the fact that Matchmaker has decided to set you up against so many, but you know what? As much as I am in a tier 6 battleship, I still feel that I have to get in close and play that brawling game um, with other ships and things like that. Um, so you, you sort of sit here and marvel at this factor and the funny thing was I was actually on team speak with the rest of the um, team we were actually I was actually playing this quickly before we actually started team battles this is the last match I played before I jumped in and played team battles um, so I wasn't I wasn't accounting for anything marvelous or magnificent to actually happen but of course you never know in these circumstances what could actually happen and surprisingly nothing went according to how I thought it would at the same time but I was I was sitting here and thinking how do I play this one how do I go about doing things well okay load up the AP first that's priority number one now randomly aim in the direction that destroyers could quite possibly I was actually aiming up on this Morgam and hoping he would just come in the range now I'm almost within the spotting range of him and hang on a minute there's a destroyer oh well he's in range let's see what we can do and this is the stupid thing like as much as the morgan probably was the better target shot with him pointing the way he was i was never going to hit him and look at that one hit <laughs> one shell hit the destroyer out of all my shells i launched over there and you know what I went okay so I can hit a destroyer at max range with one shot that that's a good start to the game and I avoided all the um, Kutuzo, um shells coming in and here we go another volley into me and yeah, a few little grazers nothing that could actually do any damage to me it just sort of padded on the outside of my armor and it was like yeah, yeah whatever move over keep going now that's a tier 8 
cruiser premium cruiser mind you and if you look at my hit points he has not actually done any damage now this destroyer is hiding behind the island being a little sneaky bugger so I can't actually lay any shells in our um, uh, Mitsuku Mitsuguzi uh, Mitsuguzi oh I can't pronounce it don't even go there my tongue is just not working at the moment I can't pronounce half the ships anymore um, Mizuki, there we go. I knew I'd get it once I got my brain to function properly. Um, he's basically sort of half-heartedly taking a pounding, but he's also keeping them from capping the area of A. Now, if you look there, there is actually on my mini map. We'll make it a little bit bigger. There we go. There's a New Mexico. There is a Catuzo. There is a Morgam, and there is a Hatsaharu over here on this side of the map. Now, okay. The, that, that, that's pretty reasonable. There's a, a tier, another tier six. There's a tier eight. The Morgam is a. I can't remember. Uh, it, <laughs> tier eight. So there's two tier eights. There's a tier eight destroyer. Three tier eights. There's a Fuso now. That's another tier eight. And New Mexico. Okay, so this is not looking pretty. Now, as much as it's. Not a bad thing that their Nuremberg just went in ham and said, I can take anything, and completely got himself destroyed over it. It's wonderful, but yeah, it, it's not what we need right now. And boom, three citadels. Look at that. That Morgam didn't even stand a chance. And that was almost a devastating strike. It could have been, which could have been absolutely brilliant about now to have a devastating strike on the Morgam, but someone else took the kill off me. Um, so, I've actually slowed my ship down here. Um, I think I'm sitting at quarter pace, and I'm about to build speed up again. I slowed down deliberately for one reason. I've got the island between me and the battleships now. What would you why would anyone use such a game mechanic? Um, it just keeps me unspotted, but it looks like these shells are actually coming in and hitting me as well from the other the Fuso, I'd say. I've now set up my um, spotter plane so I can get shots from up on the higher angles down on top of these guys, and it works quite well and um, I did get a couple of good shots on tier 8 then and did some nice damage in comes a few more shells at me and off the Fuso doesn't look like he actually hit me which is a great thing um, okay <laughs> not much to shoot at now, oh I'm Miyoko, okay Miyoko sounds good, what tier is the Miyoko? I think it's tier 6, tier 7 tier 7 cruiser, Japanese, great but then I spot out of the corner of my eye the American tor torpedo bombers, I should say. And I thought, hmm, I need to basically keep my ship in a straight line to them because they're just being auto-clicked and dropping bombs. And oh, there was two fires in that one. That was a nasty one. That wasn't very nice. So I quickly used my repair kit and I used my hit point pool and I begin to turn this tugboat all this boat, the ship, ship, use the word ship, around. Now I've still got a few more seconds on my spotter plane, 20 seconds to be precise, thinking I might be able to get them over the island, and I don't, and it just splatters against the side of the volcano island. It was sort of a bit of a gamble sending the spotter plane up, it was sort of hoping they would stay in position so I could utilise and shoot at them, but it didn't really work, and that poor New Mexico obviously thinking I was going to be further than what I was, fired a full salvo and didn't actually hit me. Um, so now most of the tier 8 are out in the open water area, which is not very good, but they actually have all three caps at the same time, so realistically this is not looking good at all for us. Torpedoes coming in on our destroyer, the Mizuki, um, I'm following these shells in and oh, just a bit short of that Fuso. Alright, so I'm starting to get into range of some of these ships, but at the same time I'm still nervous because over to my left here there's the Hatsuharu, it's just sitting there guarding the opening, more or less, and I don't really want to get in there too close with him, so I'm re-angling my armour for this Fuso and other ships anticipating that they're going to probably be shooting at me. Now I haven't got the range to actually shoot that Fuso, so Minding my own business, I now 
look at him and go, is he reversing? No. No. <laughs> what? He was stopped there. Now he's reversing? What on earth is he doing? And, okay, fair enough, he's reversing. And, oh, three hits, that's not too bad. 10,000 damage, I'm going to take that quite happily. With another 19 seconds left on my guns to reload, I quickly look around and go, yeah, yeah, okay, cool, we know it's there. Uh, let's pick on the Fuso, why not? He's a, he's a tier 8. Get some good XP off a of tier 8, shooting him. Um, as you can see, I'm not running any flags. I need to actually start running flags a bit more. Okay, range is good. Firing. Do the shells go in? We'll follow these ones in. And they're looking pretty good. And they're over the top. Okay, fine. Be over the top then. Um, what do we do now? Alright, so you're probably sitting here thinking, why did I choose this battle out of all the battles? Because something interesting happens in this battle and this is the turning point um, despite the fact the enemy team has quite a large pool of points on victory it's sort of one of those moments in the game where you look at how we're positioned we're sort of positioned in a way that we're protecting ourselves but we're actually surrounding the enemy but hang on a minute is this North Carolina just sitting still. It looks like he's either sitting still or reversing. And this is what I was talking about. You, you actually sit there and think, hang on a minute. This blockhead has pretty well parked his ship in the opening. Now I look around and go, oh, okay, there's the Miyoko and the Fuso. Yep, the North Carolina. I would say he's actually just still sitting there. But this is the bizarre thing i'm pretty sure in a few more seconds someone else decides to stop their boat dead in the water and you go what are you people doing are you insane you need to be sailing these ships not parking them in the middle of the ocean and like the North Carolina, why was he just sitting still allowing us to pound him now i'm surprised the um the Kutuzov hasn't actually popped his smoke screen as of yet. It would be actually quite handy for me if he did, because I could utilize that to my advantage. Oh, there we go. Earl Grey is getting online. Another very good World of Warships player. If you do have time, jump onto Twitch and watch Earl Grey play. I actually thought I'd shut my emails down so I didn't do those sort of things. But anyway. Um, so there we go. Oh, a nice critical on one of the guns actually damaging it more or less haven't I don't know whether I took it out but I damaged the gun on that Fuso which is good news for me it either means he has to repair it to get it up and running again or he has to do something else and this is the advantage of the New Mexico I'm within probably pretty well optimum gun range for most of these ships and this allows me the opportunity to actually take my time and get my ship into the right positions to actually be utilized there's a Fuso We'll shoot the Fuso. He's the only one sailing side on. Why would you sail side on? And there's the destroyer, the Mizuki, uh, the enemy's one. So there we go. Five decent hits, doing 14 damage. For, not 14 damage. 14,000 damage. By the way, it looked maybe even 1,400. I didn't quite catch it quick enough. Either way, that Fuso is taking a fair old pounding. And look, the Katuzo is actually sitting on fairly decent hit points now. Um. So, Fuso is burning from bloody stern to aft, which is great news. I take another volley over that way to basically see if I can finish him off, and do I get the kill? Looks like I get the kill with just two shots. <laughs> he was only left on a slither of health, which is good for me. Takes out one big gun, more or less, or a big gun with distance. So, there we go. I just killed a tier 8. Fuso. Tier 8 is the Fuso? Tier 6. My bad. Tier 6 Fuso. This is where I was a bit sort of scratchy well going, oh am I going to hit this um, Kutuzo? I had to sort of get my ship in a position where I can actually absorb some of these shells from him. So that that way then um, I can use my hit points now against the, um, the North Carolina. Um, probably not the smartest things to do, but at the same time, like, what's the worst that he could do to me? Like, 
kill me? Yeah, okay, cool. But this is where the battle has taken a turn. Now, we've got the same amount of points as I did when I said the battle has taken its turn. Now, we're really pushing into them. We've actually surrounded these last few ships and they are moving in from each side. There's a critical and there is a citadel as well on that Miyoko. So, this is even better. Um, and this is what I mean. The New Mexico is designed to sort of get in, get out, get in, get out. And that's how I feel I have to play it. It's got a great turning circle so you can flip it around very quickly as you've seen. Um, map awareness is one thing you really need to be aware of the whole time in this game. You need to be able to pick your targets, pick your battles, move into the right times and pull out at the right times as well. It's it's a very, very tricky balance. Now, you're probably thinking, why am I shooting at the destroyer rather than the battleship? Well, the battleship's just on the edge of my range, whereas this destroyer is sort of sailing in the direction I could probably hit him, and it was pity that my shells didn't actually go more true. Um, I do like the suggestion that was made about World of Warships in the fact that um, people... Um, that maybe if you aim at a target long enough your guns get more and more accurate over time for aiming at that target and actually hitting that target so that all your shells start hitting so probably means the same thing as the aimbots do in games and there is a lot of aimbot usage at the moment it is just phenomenal actually um, how much is actually going on there you go a thousand damage with one shell. Um, and you're probably sitting there thinking, what are you talking about? Margon, you're, you're off your rocker. Well, maybe I am off my rocker, but at the same time, I've found recently I can be ducking and weaving and still get hit like no tomorrow. And a few of the other guys I do play from um, 1AR, the clan, um, have actually said the same thing, where they um, sit there and look at things and go, well, hang on a minute. What's, why is why are people shooting me? Why why are people having to use aimbot? Now, I know the more damage you do, the more criticals you do, the more citadels and stuff you do, you get more XP and stuff like that, but at the same time, do you really need to? A citadel on the Amagi, beautiful. <laughs> Another citadel on a tier 8 ship. Now, yeah, see, this is the thing. The guns might be at a tier 6 level, but they can still pack a punch. So, look, I'm not taking a gripe. You know what? Use whatever game mechanics you want. It's in the game mechanics, the aim bot. Like, unless Wargaming themselves actually decide we're going to take it out, there's nothing we can do as players to fight against that. Um, well, there you go. Mizuki and a aircraft carrier and a new, new Mexico left over. The Independence, I should say. Not a bad turnaround. And you know what? I've sat on probably the same amount of hit points most of this game, even though I've used one, two repair kits. Um, it just shows that using, utilizing your battleship the right way, I've done over a hundred thousand damage, as you can see at the top there, which is phenomenal. Um, it's not brilliant, it's not outstanding, but it's just, it's tier 8 battle. I shouldn't have realistically lived as long as I did, but I actually did, which was the best part about this whole game. It's pretty I can't shoot for shit and hit this New Mexico when the time could have been for it right now. Um, so yeah, um, I think that was about all I did. So, realistically, the good thing about this battle was it probably showed how maneuverable this place. I didn't have any torpedoes or anything come into me, so yeah, it, it, it is difficult. I've almost reloaded. Will I get another shot off? Here we go. And no, someone else got the kill. And that's pretty well the end of it, I'm pretty sure. Uh, yeah, we haven't got much left. Looks like we're going to cap out by points, which is a bit disappointing. We know where the independence is. You can see him on the map right at the back there in the, the B or the Beta uh, 9 area. Um, so yeah, that's that's pretty well New Mexico. That that's how I find is the best way to play it is play it smart, getting in and out of combat um, or out of the, out of engagements, um, tussle around and sort of angle your ship the right way. If you angle your ship the right way, you saw HE shells did to a certain extent start bouncing off my hull, um, which can be quite an interesting thing to have happen at times. So. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm quite impressed by the New Mexico. I think it's actually a very good ship, very strong ship. Um, 
and it does pay to have um, a little bit of experience in battleships, particularly the American ones. I've, I've played quite a few of them now, and I do enjoy these ships immensely. I think they're just a brilliant ship to play. So everyone's jumping in the Dota 2 at the moment. I'm going to have to probably get in there pretty quickly to join in with them in a few short seconds. So, um, that is pretty well the New Mexico battle. Um, I'll probably take you over now to the um, end of screen charts. Um, this is basically um, the end results of my battle. If it's actually going to do what I want to do. It is. Um, so there you go. 254,031 hits. One plane. Look at the plane. Didn't even realise I had a plane. Um, two incapacitations, one destroyed, five citadels, and an assistant cap, along with all the other mission stuff you get. Um, go across the screen, and as you can see, top of the list. In a tier 6 ship, top of list damage uh, on XP earned. You know what? Big thumbs up. That just shows that playing the ship the right way, the smart way, will actually help you, and it will actually make the game a lot easier for you to play. Um, the closest was the Hatsuharu on their team with 1,100. Um, so there's a big difference. So I know that probably hitting higher tier ships and things like that did make a difference in that regard. But all in all, overall, it was actually not too bad. And I did really enjoy it. Guys, that's pretty well lit from the, uh, for a new, the New Mexico review. I hope you have enjoyed it. I know I've enjoyed playing it, and I know that I probably will recommend that if you don't know how to play um, battleships, these ones can be a bit hard to start off with, purely and simply because you've got to be brutal about them. You've got to get in there and get out at the same time, but make sure you're angling and putting your ship in the right positions to take on enemies at any point in time. Um, otherwise, get your Japanese battleships at the moment. They're long-range, bloody battering ramps. You can sit back as much as you want. Just don't get into range. And um, you can have just as much fun as those. I, I have played quite a few of the Japanese battleships, as I said. I've got my Congo now. The Congo is a brilliant ship. Outside of that, guys, look, I hope you've enjoyed this. Happy hunting, and I'll catch you on those seas.